this one when we introduced this on Thursday. This is our latest basket and we're calling this one Pedal Power. And I've got the pieces over here with all the sizes. All righty, I think we got it. Okay, so this one is the Martelli Pedal Power Basket. And it comes in two sets. We have the small pedal power set, and that is these three pieces right here, which is the two and a half, the three and a half, and the four and a half. So we label them as extra, extra small, extra small, and small. So we're calling this the small set. And so the sizes of them are right here. So here is the littlest one. This is what I call the two and a half or the extra, extra small. You saw this earlier. So this is the extra, extra small basket. Works very well with fabric and you can just put a little piece of batting in here. This one here is extra small. This one is the three and a half. So that one was the two and a half. Here is the three and a half. That's what made this one right here. I actually got a little handle that I sewed into it. Also, I filled, I made this one with, um, I think I got fusible fleece in that one. And then the 4.5, that's this one right here. This one's called the small. So that's this right here. Just cute little, great little projects, easy to do. So that's the small set. And that is, here's the packaging for that. And now the next set is what we call Pedal Power Template Set Large. So the sizes for this one are, 5.5, this is called medium, the 6.5, which is the large, and the extra large, 7.5. So that's the three sizes here. And so the baskets that I have representing those are these right here. This one here is the 5.5, uh, and 7.5. So these are the three sizes. I thought this one would be just adorable um, to have at your house and you could put your dog toys. Those of you like who have pets that have lots of toys all over the place, it'd be a great little basket to put the pet's toys in. So, or you can make an Easter basket out of it. What I love about it is the versatility of what you can do with the petals. You can have the petals up, you can fold them all down, add a little button, you can fold just a couple of them down, however you want it to do. So it's just super easy, super, super simple, one, one template. It does have some extra little steps to it. So some of the things that you're going to need to be able to make this project, of course, you're going to need whichever set that you're going to do or what size template that you're going to need. You're going to need, I'm using coordinating fabrics, whatever looks good on the outside or on the inside, they kind of match. Um, fusible heavyweight fleece. You can use single-sided fusible foam or batting. That's what I've used. I'm sure there's other applications, other projects, that, other things that you could do. Like if you were doing like indoor-outdoor fabric, you might not have to have any interfacing at all. I use a basting spray or a basting powder would be something that'd be really good to help you with this. Rotary cutter, pinking shears. You're going to need pinking shears to clip your curves on the, on the petals. Uh, trimming scissors or applique scissors because I find I'm trimming away all of my excess fleece or batting or foam. So you can use your precision scissors. One of my favorite tools that I use is what is called an applique scissor or the duckbill scissors are kind of angled. This is just a, I bet a lot of you have these in your drawer and don't even know what to do with them. <laughs> so pull them out. They're the most amazing scissors that I find to use for clipping away my excess um, foam or fleece or batting away from my stitches so I don't have as much bulk when I go to doing my sewing. So I'll grab these and it's easy to clip all that excess away without clipping your stitches. So I, I love using the, these duckbill scissors. Um, clips or pins, buttons, if you want to apply buttons. I've got several kinds of buttons, regular buttons, I've got fancy buttons. So buttons for if you want to fold down your petals. Uh, basic sewing supplies, marking, pencil, or tool you're going to need. I like to use like a far, sharp, really sharp pencil or an ink pen. Just be careful. You don't want that ink to bleed through, through your fabric, particularly if you're using a, a thinner fabric. Um, and like I said on here, the smaller basket works well with the fleece and the batting. The larger basket works best with the fusible foam. 
When you get the templates, you're going to get the full written instructions that's in here. You're going to see also on the templates, it's going to have those two little letters that's on here. I means it's got full written instructions. B means it's a video, and that's what you're watching right now, so you'll see the video. So we're actually going to make this one, similar to this one right here. This one is my little cave basket. So I'm going to actually kind of replicate this one, but instead of having the, the, the dots on the outside, we're going to have the same fabric on the outside. So I had to do a little bit of prep work because this one takes a little bit of time. So I'm going to move these aside and we're going to get started because this is the project that's just going to take just a little bit longer. And I am actually working again with the 5.5, which is our medium. All right. Set these aside. Okay, so we're going to make something similar to this one right here. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to get your fabrics and you're going to go ahead and press them, you know, iron them and press them, get them all smoothed out to get all your wrinkles and everything out. If you want to do them a little bit starchy and you can get them a little bit starched. So what you're going to do is you're going to cut out your fabrics. You're going to need six petals for the outside fabric, six petals for the lining, and then you're going to need six pieces of your fusible fleece and your fusible foam, this or whatever that you're using. I do not recommend for this project, particularly if you're going to be clipping away your bulk, to have your fusible fuse to the fabric and then clip it out because I want you to be able to clip away all that extra bulk. Some of the things that that does is you're not going to have so much bulk here. You're not going to have so much bulk here. Now, if you're using the foam and then you clip away that excess uh, foam, you're going to have a really nice, pretty edge going off on the, on the edges and it will lay nice and flat on the bottom if you take the time to clip away the excess material so you have this nice flat bottom that's going to show up. So that's why I recommend do not pre-iron your fusible to your fabric first. So you're going to cut out your fabrics and then you're going to cut your pieces out of your whatever you're using, uh, whether it's the fleece, the foam, the batting. I just do that first. Then I'm going to talk to you about um, when we go to iron in it to the back of our, our uh, fabric. I don't want you pressing the whole thing on, so I'm going to, we're going to go over that. So we're going to start with the very beginning. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to cut out your six petals, six of these. This is my outer piece, and then my lining. So I'm just going to grab this little piece of fabric right here. I'm going to show you how easy it is to um, cut your petals out, and you can of course, this is not very well ironed, but I'm just going to, just for demonstration, I'm just going to show you. You know, let's just grab this little piece. This one is a piece that's ironed, so I'm just going to show you using it with this fabric here. And it doesn't matter if I have it on the bias. It, it doesn't affect it. So you're just going to have your template on here, and you're just going to cut all the way around. Now, you'll notice on the template there are markings. I've got these lines here and I have this line right here. These are very important. You're going to be using these lines throughout the project, so you can go ahead and hit this with the Martelli pen if you need to see them a little bit better, this line and these two, these two lines here right here. But I'm going to show you what these mean, so it'll be easier for you when you go to be marking your pieces. You need these for marking your pieces. So you just set this on your fabric. Pay attention if you're using a directional fabric. Always know that this is the top, this is the bottom. So you just set this on your fabric and using, I'm going to just use the 45, you're just going to cut around it. You can stack up your fabrics and cut multiples at one time. Just super easy, just to, you're not marking these marks with your scissors or anything, you're just cutting out your pieces. That's, that's all you're doing, you're just cutting out your pieces. So you're going to have six petals and you're going to have six linings. Then you're going to go ahead and cut out Here's my foam, so I got my fusible foam, so I'm just going to lay my template on here. I find it easier if I have the glue single-sided on the bottom, and I have my template laid right on top. It's just a little bit easier for me to work with, and I like cutting my foam with my 60. And the same thing, just cutting all the way around. And there's my excess. Easy peasy, cut out six of these. 
what you're going to attach these now to your outer piece, your outer fabric, not your lining. But you're going to do something to these first and to all of the lining pieces. You've got to draw your lines. You've got to draw your marks on it. So I'm going to show you first with the, um, with the, with this fusible right here. You're not going to put it onto your outer fabric because this is going to be glued onto here. You're going to put it onto the back of this piece right here. So you can attach this first and then draw it on, or you could go ahead and draw your lines on after. Uh, after you have it attached, but I'm going to show you either way You just got to have these lines and you're going to draw these lines on the back side of where the glue is not So here's the glue. This is what's going to be attached to this piece right here. So imagine this piece right here So I have glued it on and now I'm going to draw my lines I've got to get these lines on here because these are your starting and stopping points for sewing So it makes it easier for everything to uh, fit together very well so to make it a little bit easier, you could go ahead and take this template and you could lay it on one of your straight lines on your mat and you could roll it all the way down to the zero line. And you could see how far is this line down from the top edge right here. This is actually two and a half inches. So I got to take my piece on the side that I'm going to be drawing on and I am going to lay this edge right here on a straight edge, just like that. I've got this bumped up all the way to the very edge of my mat. Now I'm going to draw my first line, which is actually two and a half inches. So I'm going to use my two and a half inch ruler and I'm just going to set this down right here on this edge over top of my piece that's going to be fused. But this is the back side. This is the glue side. So it's on the side that does not have the glue on it. And with my pencil or a marking tool, now I'm going to draw a line. Now, you do not have to draw that line all the way across. You can if you want, but you can just catch it on the edges here and here, just like that. So there's my mark. I need that's a starting stop, starting and stopping point here. This is very important to have that line. Now the second line is these right here that's on these edges right here. You, again, you do not have to draw this entire line. It's just etched into here. You mainly need this piece down here. That's the most important part. So what you got to do, it's a quarter of an inch. So whether you have a ruler that has an add a quarter or you can eyeball what a quarter is, but you're just going to take your ruler and you're going to estimate what a quarter is. So you can have this on a line and then you can put your ruler on a line so you can get it right at that quarter. And you're going to draw your line. So you're going to, you can draw it all the way down if you want, or you can just catch it here at the end. So I've just got my first line right here. And then I'm going to repeat that for the other point. Get my quarter of an inch and draw that line. Again, you can draw it all the way in. But this point right here is what's important. That is a starting and stopping point right here at the very point. So that's very, very, very important. You can see it a little bit better right here on this one. All right, so now I'm going to show you how, and you do that to all of the backing of your fuse, of what you're doing, your fleece, your flannel, your batting, whatever it is, you're going to be putting it on the back side of every one of your outer pieces, and you're going to draw those lines on the back side of all of your lining pieces. That's very important. You're going to have that starting stopping point on the lining here and you're going to have that line going across here you're going to need those for both all 12 pieces has to have that so let's go over to the iron i'm going to show you how i iron this down onto um, my outer pieces i can't see the monitors okay so the first thing i do is I line it up as best as I can, matching up everything as well as I can. I, it's going to be pretty close because you cut it out with your template. You're going to be able to see where everything is going to be, and you got it on the glue side. Now, you can use a smaller iron for this, but you're going to press this down, but you're not going to press the edges. You're going to get most of it in the middle. 
that's what's going to be important because it's going to be easier for you when you go to peel back your um, the batting or the um, the foam or the fleece from your fabric so that you could trim that off. So you want to not get it glued all the way to the edges. Now, if you do get it glued a little bit, it's just going to be a little bit harder to peel that back because you want to peel back. And I found with the uh, foam, it's easier to pull the foam away from the fabric than the fleece. For some reason, the fleece is just it just adheres much tighter to your fabric. So you could make it larger iron or smaller iron. And I am got this placed on here exactly where I want it. So nothing is really being seen. And my points, the most important part is the point here. This is most important. So I'm going to lay my iron on here and I'm going to get as close to the edge, but I try to stay away from it by about a quarter of an inch or so. And I'm mainly making sure I've got all that heat that's being applied more towards the center, not worrying so much about the edges. Because at the end, you're going to do a pressing and it's going to press, it's going to press anything that's not adhered. So I'm just getting this as closely appeared without getting it way into the edge. Now see, I'm trying, I got a little close right there, but I just try to make sure I'm really adhering this more to the center and leaving that quarter inch around the edge where it's not being tacked down. But again, if it does get glued accidentally, I mean, it, it just, you're just gonna peel it away. So I'm just getting this as close as I can. This one I already have done. And you can see it's adhered, but not so much at the edges. It's adhered more in the middle, but not so much at the edges. And that's what I want. So you're gonna do that to all of your outer pieces. Get all of that glued on so that you can see now when they're flipped over, there's my lines, my guidelines that I'm gonna need for doing my stitching. All right. So the next step after you get everything all glued and all, all pressed, then we're going to go to the sewing station and we're going to sew all of our pieces together. So we're going to start, and I'm going to kind of show you here because I just actually did a little bit of starting right here. You're going to go ahead and sew them together in sets of two, and then you're going to sew those two pieces together. So I'm going to show you how you're going to start and stop at that point right there. That way it's going to lay nice and pretty like this. And when you've trimmed away that excess, it's going to lay flatter here. So this is for the outer pieces. Now for the lining, it's a little bit different. Because on these, what we're going to do is we're going to press open our seams after we've trimmed away all of our excess. We're going to press open our seams and then we're going to top stitch. And I'm going to show you how we do the top stitching. And whatever bulk I have that's going to be here in the center is going to get flattened when you see the top stitching that we do. But this right here, we're going to sew these all together and we're going to constantly be holding our, our seam that we just sewed over under to the, you know, behind us or towards us so that when we go to press this, when they're all sewed together, we're going to have them all going in the one direction. It's going to create this pretty little flower here in the middle. So I'm going to show you that. So let's go ahead and go to the sew machine. We're going to start getting all of our sewing done. I'm grabbing all of my stuff that I started and we're going to go ahead and get these finished up. Okay, so everything is done with the quarter of an inch and I have it set at, you know, the basic quarter 1.8, 2.0, whatever is on your machine for your basic quarter inch stitch. So I sew all of my pieces together, then I go to press them and then we're going to do all of our top stitching. So you're just sewing all of your pieces together in sets of two and you're sewing them here at the bottom point that's right here from this edge all the way to the bottom, but you are going to stop right here and back tack when you come to where the lines crisscross right here. You're going to sew from here all the way down till you get to the X where your lines crisscross and you're going to stop right there and back tack a little bit right there. You're going to do this to all six pieces, do your pets sets of two, and then, then you're going to do them where you're going to be putting them all together. So I've got all of these four where I've started sewing them together. Here's my last set of two right here. I have done no pressing. I've done the same thing, started at the top, came down and stopped where it intersects right there. So now I'm going to start sewing them together. So 
I'm grabbing one and I'm lining it up here at this edge. What I meant was now I'm going to kind of pull back all of these seams that are underneath here and I'm folding them back towards me. And then this one is going to come down and that seam is going to fold over towards me also. I'm matching up my seams from the previous one and when I line these up I see that my dot, my, my crisscross right here, stops right there before I get to the seam. So you want to have all of this pulled back so you're not sewing any of these any of these previous seams. You're going to pull it all back and you're going to start, start a quarter of an inch here and you're going to sew all the way down and back tack and stop. So I pull all of this back. So it's just the two pieces of fabric that's underneath me, underneath, um, underneath my foot. Got everything pulled back so I'm not stitching on anything else. And I'm going to stop right there where those lines cross. One more stitch and then back tack. Just a couple of stitches. So I only have one more to go. So just gather it up. Line up here at the top. And the same thing, I'm pulling all of this excess material out of my way so that I'm going to start and stop right there where that point is right here. So I'm not going to catch any other of the previous seams right here. It's going to produce a really pretty little flower at the end and you'll see. I'm going to sew over it anyway. Lining up everything, making sure everything is out of the way so I feel nothing under there except the two pieces of fabric that I'm sewing. Coming to that point. One more stitch and back tack. So it looks, should look something like this. All nice and flat. So I'm going to show you what, how we're going to press this in just a minute. We're going to go ahead and set this aside. Now we're going to finish sewing our petals for the outer piece. So I'm taking my two pieces that haven't been sewed yet and I'm lining up. I'm not paying attention too much of the, of the batting. I'm mainly focusing on the fabric that's under that foam and I'm lining up my fabrics and matching up the points on the fabrics. It should be really close. Now I'm going to just sew a quarter of an inch all the way down. And when I get to where that little crossover that we had drawn is, I'm going to back tack right there at that point. One more stitch and back tack. So as you do each set of two, I recommend you go ahead and trim away the excess material, which is in this case, it's the fleece or the foam. I'm going to grab my scissors or curved scissors. Curved scissors work good too, but I found that these little, these little scissors work the best. So I'm going to make sure I have none of this fleece attached or foam attached to my fabric. So I have this little tool right here and I just kind of run it right there along the edge and separate it from the fabric. And I do that on both, both sides. Make sure I have all of that separated. So now it's going to be easy for me to trim away that excess material, removing the bulk or the excess foam. So using my little scissors here, I just start clipping. Just kind of running it along and clipping away the excess material. As close as I can to the stitches without clipping the stitches like I've done right here. 
flip it over and do the other side. Any questions on this one? If you have those duckbill scissors or applique scissors, they work very well for this project right here. Pull them out, you probably got them buried in your sewing box and you don't even know it. <laughs> That's like where I had mine. All right, so I trimmed it away and I see, oh, I've got a little wide right here. I can go in here and I can trim a little bit more of that away. You one person ask if you order all three or could you get them separately? Or uh, order what? Um, you're going to get in a set of three, you're going to get this in the set, in the small set, you're going to get the two and a half, the three and a half, and the four and a half. In the large set, you're going to get the um, three, three pedals, three sizes in that one, which will be the four and a half, five and a half, no, five and a half, six and a half, and the seven and a half. It'll be the larger ones. Okay, so I've got those two pieces trimmed. So now I'm going to attach it to this one right here, just like how we did when we sewed the lining together. Get all my tools away from me. So I am lining this up just like before. I match, I'm paying more attention to the fabrics lining up. And here to here. So I'm gonna sew a quarter of an inch from here to here and again, stop at that point that's right here at the very bottom, pulling everything away from me, just like we did for the lining. Coming up to that point. And then back tack it. And before I move on to the last, I like to go ahead and do the same thing, get my excess material off first. So I run my little tool to make sure it's all separated from the, the glue, the, the, uh, fl the foam is completely separated from the fabric so I can go ahead and trim this away. I do that at, at, after each section. How are we doing out there? Everybody good? So everybody, does this all make sense? Be very careful so you don't trip your, clip your fabric. But these little scissors get really, really close without clipping the fabrics. Flipping it over, catching the other side. Pulling back my fabric a little bit. Getting every bit of that extra excess foam out of my way. Got nice and close without clipping those stitches. So I only have one more stitch to go. So I'm taking these two pieces and just like we did for all the other ones, we're just lining up our fabrics. And we're gonna do the same thing. Start at the top point and then sew all the way down to where the crisscross is. just as I did before. Get my little tool and I separate the, the glue from the fabric, just separate it on both sides and then I trip, trim away that excess foam. So it's just a little bit of tediousness that you're having to do, just kind of repetition. And we're not done here because we've got more foam trimming that we're going to be doing as we do the project. We're going to be trimming the foam on the sides and we're going to be trimming the foam off of the, um, the curve. So just quickly 
How washable is the phone? It's washable. It's washable. Yeah, and then you could just re-iron. I mean, it's very washable. So I'm just clipping it away. But doing this little step right here just makes it um, lay so much nicer. Okay, hold on. Grabbing my scissors to get this little last piece right here. Just got to do what you got to do to get all that excess foam gone. Okay, there we go. All right, so once you have both of these pieces, so we're going to give them a press, and then we're going to come back and we're going to top stitch all of them, and I'll show you how we do that. By taking out that excess foam, now it's going to lay nice and flatter here, but what I like to do is press open these seams that haven't been pressed open, and it's pretty easy. You're just kind of giving it as best as you can a little bit of press open. I mean, you don't have to, but I just press this open, just quickly, just hitting all those little spots. Because I'm actually going to, I think this iron's hotter, and I'm going to um, top stitch on both sides of the seam in just a second. And what it's going to do, it's going to catch all those seams that have been pressed open, but this little knot that's here in the middle, when you go be sewing across it six times, it's going to make it, it's going to flatten that out too on the bottom of your basket. So just press them back here, last one here, and pressing this back here. Just lay my little iron on there, just flatten it, flipping it back over, and I'm just giving it a good press on top. We're going to top stitch on both sides all the way around. It just seemed to give it a better look overall. So now this one, this one's pressed a little bit differently. So I lay it wrong side up after I've sewed all the way around, smooth out all of my petals. And I've got what looks like the start of a little flower that's here in the center. So to get that flower to form, I'm kind of going to make sure all of my seams are going in one direction all the way around. So I just kind of press them over to one direction all the way around. Let's kind of see something kind of magical happen right here. Press them all, all over in one direction. Now with your fingers, just kind of push down in the center of that where you had done that, all those little seams, seem to create this little flower that's going to be in the middle. You'll never see it, but you'll know it's there. <laughs> but we're going to, by doing this and then doing our top stitching, it's also going to flatten that little petal. Now if I would have pressed these open, you would not have seen, it, this would not have laid as flat. But by spinning it, per se, around, it creates a little uh, de design in the center that's going to be a little bit flatter overall for the center. And we're going to top stitch all of this. So that was kind of like a surprise right there, seeing that little flower pop up. All right, so now we're going to do some top stitching. So I'm just going to top stitch about an eighth of an inch down on each side, on each one of these rows. So it's going to be on this one, and then we're going to do it on this one. Grab a tissue. So this is one of those um, times I like to grab my G foot. I think it's the over edge foot. I grabbed the G foot. It has that bar in the middle. I suppose one of those stitch of the ditch foots would probably work very well for this too. But I pop my little G foot on here and I just slide my stitch, my th um, thing all the way over to about 
I guess up to about five. So I'm going to just sew a quarter of an inch down both sides, but the center of that G foot is going to go in between all of these seams. And I'm going to do it for both of them because it's a little bulky. I'm going to pull, get all my X, all of my little tools away from me. Raise my stitch count up to about 350. The groove of my G foot is going to just rest right there in the seam and I'm just going to sew all the way across. And I just pivot one petal. It's going to be six passes. Just keep going around, it will catch up with you. Any questions so far? I'm going to repeat. Okay, the reason why I didn't trim it, because I've done lots of projects before where I would reduce the size of the foam and have it just a quarter inch smaller all the way around. But for this project, I wanted that foam to be actually sewed in. So a lot of times when you're doing a project like this, like I've done it on the curvy bag, that foam is not being caught in the seam allowance when we're sewing it together. So I've had to do stitches in between just so it holds it in place. What I like about doing it like this, where I'm trimming it as I go, that foam is still caught in the seam. So you're only, you're trimming it away almost to just shy of an eighth of an inch from the stitch line, but at least it's still caught in the stitches. So that's why instead of making the foam, trimming it a quarter of an inch all the way around, I know this is a little bit more extra work, but at least it's being caught. Now I suppose you could do that um, and then I might sew some extra stitches across it or maybe in the middle of it just to make sure that it's, that it's actually going to stay adhered. Does that, I hope I answered that question. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. You're the most uh, speed and normal talking for gradients, right? All right, so I'm doing the same thing that I just did for the outer piece as I'm just doing a top stitch. This step does not have to be done, but I think it was just an added touch to making it look a little bit, look a little bit better. I'm doing just the exact same thing. I'm just ride it along and catching it on both sides. So I don't even have to, um, I'm just, I just rotate it a quarter, hit the next side, and as I go, it just catches it on both sides. I thought this was just a prettier finishing touches. I don't think you have to do this part. It just seemed to make it look, um, did I just lose myself? Wait, wait, wait. Here, here we are. I'm here, I'm right here. <laughs> nope, yep, there we are. I don't worry about back tacking up here at the top because that's going to be caught in the next seam. And I think I got one more. Oh, two more. And 
this should be the last one. So if you all can see that pretty little lump that I had right there in the middle, it's now nice and flat from doing all of that top stitching going all the way around. And it caught, for the most part, every bit of the seams that had got pressed open. On the petal, on the lining, that pretty little flower has also been sewed down nice and flat. So it just, made, just was an element that just seemed to add another touch. All right, so while we're here at the sew machine, the next step is to start sewing our sides together. So, put my, getting my G foot back off, put my regular foot on, getting back to the quarter inch. So we're gonna sew all of our pieces together. For our lining, we're just putting right sides together. And this is where we're going to, you take, you're seeing your two lines now on the wrong side of your, of your uh, lining you are gonna match up those lines as close as you can. Don't pay attention to what's going on down here because now you got all those extra stitches here. So you're gonna line up those two lines on both sides as best as you can. And now you're gonna sew down each side. You're gonna start at that line. You're gonna drop your needle down there a quarter of an inch at that line, goes a couple stitches forward, a couple stitches back, and then sew all the way down to the end and back tack at the end. When you, it's gonna feel a little different down here because you folded that seam over, but it should lay out fine by lining up your stitch, your lines that you drew on the back of your lining on each piece. Now how I do this one is I do my first one and then I do the opposite side and then I do the next one and then I do the opposite side. But when you do the lining on one of the pieces, you've gotta leave an opening. So I'll do it right here on this very first one. I'm gonna start at my line. I'm gonna sew down maybe about a half of an inch to three quarters of an inch, back tack. And then I'm gonna come all the way down here to the end and about three quarters of an inch, I'm gonna start and back tack right here. So I need this opening to be a little bit bigger because we have quite a bit of bulk that's being pulled through there for, all, for, the, for the basket. So I'm just sewing a three quarters of an inch here and three quarters of an inch here on my very first one. That's leaving my opening for turning. Now I like to drop my needle down into the pencil lines. So I know I'm right there on target. So a couple stitches down, a couple stitches back. Come down with this one. This one's just gonna be real short cause I'm leaving that opening. Now I'm gonna go all the way down to where I have about an inch or so from the edge. And I'm just gonna back tack here. Pardon me? Could you use a long zigzag? A long zigzag? Yeah. I don't know. I su I would have to try that. I have not done that. A long zigzag. The, so read the full question to me. Uh, wondering if you could use a long zigzag stitch. For sewing or for top stitching? For top stitching, that would be pretty, I guess. I'm looking to the side and I'm dropping my needle right down there at my pencil marks. Now I'm grabbing this one here, matching up my pencil lines here. And doing all the rest of the sides. Looking for my pencil marks, lining it up. Dropping my 
needle down, smooth it out, and then sew it down. If you find that you have accidentally sewed beyond that pencil mark, you're going to have to take that stitch or two out. You cannot, that, that is going to be a pivotal point for when we go to attaching the top, the lining to the, um, to the lining to the, um, to the outer piece. By having that area that's not being sewed, you don't have to go in there and clip that. It, it just makes it so nice and smooth when you go to turn it at the end. It really makes a big difference. And I think I just have one more side to go. Looking at my lines. Kind of seeing them on both sides. Lining them up. Last piece. And I use my hand, my, my, my uh, flywheel, and I just drop my needle myself to make sure I get it right where I need for it to be. so now it should be starting to look like a basket like this getting there don't have to do any ironing or anything we're getting ready to attach this to the basket part so that's it so here's the lining also with our opening right here all right so we're going to do the exact same thing that we just did for the lining except this one's going to be a little bit more time consuming because we're going to be trimming away all the excess so you're going to grab your petals you're going to fold it in half you're going to again look to make sure that those they should line up pretty darn close they should be when you go to put your petals together you should see that the lining the lines are pretty much right on the money for where you need for them to be now this one's a little bit easier for sewing because with the foam it's right up underneath your foot so you can see exactly where your needle is going to be dropping down. I don't have to do the um, drop my needle down by hand. <clears throat> but I'm doing the same thing <coughs> a couple stitches forward, a couple stitches back. <coughs> and this is again one of those situations where I find it's just easier if I trim these as I go. So I grab my little tool and I am separating the fabric from the back of the foam where it's unglued. That's why you didn't want to press too hard to get all that gluing, doing it on both sides. It's going to make a difference on how it's going to look in the final process. So then I'm going to grab my trimmers and we're just going to trim that excess down. Now if you drew that line over a little bit more, you're still going to have that line there from when we do our final stitch down and that's attaching the lining to um, the, outer, the outer pieces. So I'm just quickly just trimming this away as close as I can. It's just going to make a difference in how it's going to look overall at the end. We're going to have all these little bitty slivers all over the place. <laughs> all right, so I like to also go to the opposite side. Same thing, matching up my two pieces on top, making sure that my lines look like they're right across from each other and then just sewing it down. Separating with my little tool here. 
Now I did this one of them with fleece and boy that the fleece is just so much harder. If you've got it where it's glued all the way to the edge, it's just harder to separate it from. Of course with, with the, um, the ones that I did with batting that was really pretty simple because um, I just used a little bit of a basting spray. How's everybody doing out there? I don't worry about so much of this bulk on the corner so much as I worry about it on the sides. Everybody good? Everybody with me? See how close I am? Less than an eighth of an inch from the stitching, but I don't want to get too close where I clip the stitches. That's why these little scissors work wonders for that. All right, so I just grab another section same thing, lining up. It's just repeat, repeat, repeat. Thank you. Sure, a lot of you Martelli people have this little tool. It's awesome for this project of pulling the um, pulling the glue away from the fabric, just running it down it. Said so David, I need us to get some of these duckbill scissors in because they are awesome. I've had these forever. <laughs> I know, right? Nuts batch. All right, I think we got what? Three more sides moving right along. Lining up the edges. Any questions for me? Has Margo been on? Margo is in here. Margo's here! Hey, Margo! Uh, shout out. Um, there is a quick one, but we all got her. Okay. Um, she says, uh, what is uh, this type of pulse? Uh, LinkedIn and Zelle link both sizes. Yeah. Got the linker out there. So what do you all think about the new basket? We've had that Tasket basket for a while. And I thought we need another basket. Uh, Janet, do we have the painting shears? Yes. yes. I don't, when are they going on? You let them know. When are they going on? I don't, I don't know. Uh, they came in yesterday. Today, depending on what time we get out of here. If not, they'll be up first thing in the morning, and I'll put out something in the filter too. Because they, they just... We just got them in yesterday, but I've been using these because they're the product. They were what we had coming for a while, and they're and they're awesome. And I also have the scalloped edge ones. Those are really fun. Those are cool. Mm -hmm. The sizes of what? We got. The, the largest, okay, the largest is called extra large and it is a seven and a half, it's spaced off of a seven and a half inch square. The um, next one is this called the large and it is based off of a six and a half inch square, hence the numbers. The last, and then the last of the large set is um, five and a half and it's based off of a five and a half inch square and that's called the medium. Then we have the small set. We got extra, extra small based off a two and a half inch square, 
extra small based off of a three and a half inch square and small, small, right? Or medium, I mean, medium, right? extra, extra small, extra small, and small based off of a four and a half inch square. The one I'm doing right now is a five and a half inch square. I'm gonna go ahead and trim, cut this one, sew this one down, and then we'll trim both of them. I guess it would be good for you to see what the difference is between trimmed and not trimmed. So I'm going to flip this out because I have two sides that I did not trim away, the excess. I'm going to show you why I like that look a little bit more versus not trimming it because you don't have to trim it if you don't want to. But I thought that the sides that didn't get trimmed, like this one right here, kind of had more of a rounded, uh, round, a roundedness to them right here. Whereas a side that got trimmed like this one was just a little bit more crisp at, at the edge. This is more rounded. This is more crisp, but I'm just, it's just making it just a little bit better. You don't have to trim it, but it just makes it better. You're going to have to trim. I would at least trim away part of it right here because that's a lot of bulk that you're going to be uh, sewing through when you're putting your lining and your um, the out the, the lining and the outer piece together. So I've got two more edges to trim away. So I'm just going to run my tool to separate it, and we're going to go ahead and get this trimmed away. Apologize for my allergies. Let me tell you, the pollen is falling like crazy here. Everything is turning yellow and green for Not all of the pollen. It's really bad right now. I mean, I go outside, the car is green. I have a white car and it's yellowish green. And I take allergy medicine, it just still gets to me. Plus, I'm in a dusty, fabric-y room. There's a lot of dust in here. All right, getting the last of this one, and then one more edge to trim away. And then we will be going to the last step, putting them together. Now, two ways that you could do a strap. You can go ahead and make a strap and just sew it in, or you can fold down a petal. The very second one that I did, the I sewed it the pet the uh, the strap into the top of a petal. I think it just looks better if you just fold over a petal and attach it with a button. That's why it's petal power. So many things you can do with the little petals. One more edge to trim. Okay, so that's that's it. So this is all this is all done. So now I'm going to take here. So I'm leaving it where the um, wrong side is out. So you see all that? See how that's see how that's looking? I'll go ahead and pop it back home so you can see it again, completely sewed all the way around. Because now we're going to be just attaching the lining, and there's a little trick to that. So you're going to need your clips pins for this part but here it is pretty look to how it's going to be we just got to get our lining on there so I'm going to grab my clips and I'm going to teach you the first little trick to getting this ready for for sewing all the way around all right so I'm going to put this back I found it's easier if I put my lining on the inside than to flip the lining on the outside All right, so I just take my lining, just drop it in. So what I am doing is, remember where we had started and stopped our stitching on where the pencil mark was, right? We did it to this piece to the lining, and we did it to the outer piece. 
So you're actually matching those pieces up first. Because when you go to sewing these around, it's you're going because you're coming down and then you're pivoting and you're coming back up. But because it has this little gap that's going on right here, you're not going to have to actually do this extra clipping. So it was it was it was a nice surprise to see how well it looked at those points. Because a lot of times, when you are sewing, you've got those points that are coming along. Fabric just seems to gather and bunch up, and it just it's just a you know, it just be a mess. So this will, this make, this is really smooth how, how this worked by having that starting and stopping point a quarter of an inch in like it is. So I am going, I'm matching up my top of the stitch to the top of the stitch here at each intersection and I'm dropping my clip right down on that. Matching up the stitch to the stitch. That was my starting and stopping then I'm clipping those intersections first. I do that all the way around. I clip that, go to the next one, same thing, looking for, just kind of pulling it apart a little bit, finding that stitch, seeing my stitch here. So I'm lining, putting those stitches up against each other. And then I drop my clip on there. I'm not even really paying attention to the direction of which the, the um, seam is going. I'm literally just working on matching up those stitches, maybe pushing it to one side, doesn't really matter. Just clipping there at those junctures first, doing that all the way around. So you're gonna have six. And two more. Last one, matching the stitches up. Once I have that done, now I'm just pulling my petals up, matching up the curve, and I'm dropping a clip on the top of the petals. Smoothing out everything, matching up the curve, matching up the fabrics and the foam and dropping a clip here. By doing that, it just seemed to help it just all line up rather quickly. Now, if something doesn't line up, take a look, make sure you've got your seams lined up at the edge first. You see this one moved a little bit, so I'm coming back in there and readjusting it because this didn't match up very well here. Now it does. And then if you want, you can just add some extra clips on each side of the petal as a final step. Then you're just gonna stitch all the way around, quarter of an inch all the way around. So you're gonna, again, you're gonna automatically see inside, I'm gonna be stitching from the inside, so I see my, my line is still there from when we had drawn earlier. So I know that's gonna be my starting and stop, my stop to pivot is gonna be at the line. Let me get a good one so you can see it. So see it right there? As I'm sewing along, there's my line. So as I come down this pedal, I'm gonna stop at that line and then I'm gonna pivot and then I'm gonna come back up to the next pedal. And I'm gonna see that line, even if I was to do it from the outside, if I was doing it from the outside, like if I had, um, see mine's a flatbed machine. So if I had where I had a removable arm, I would be able to have this drop down and I'd be able to sew it on the outside like that and I still see my lines of my starting my stop and, and then turn, start up the next pedal. So those lines were just very important throughout the entire project. All right, so I've got it pretty much clipped. So I'm just gonna find myself a starting point at, at the top of one of, these, one of these pedals and we're just gonna start working ourselves around and we're gonna do that quarter of an inch all the way around. 
trying to be real smooth about it because a lot of times when you stop, your machine just jumps a little bit. So just take your time, just go around carefully. Don't be afraid to maneuver this fabric to what's comfortable for you. You can easily iron it right back out. So I'm just following it along so I get to that first line where I know I'm going to pivot. I see my line right here. So I'm sewing to that line. Don't sew beyond it, just sew right to it. Now I'm just going to pivot up and start the next curve. to the next pivot. Any questions? We doing good? She sees what? She sneezes every time she uses fatigue. <laughs> I've been trying not to sneeze and sniffle. My nose has been running though. Coming along to my next pivot. I see my mark. Doing so good. We're almost done. You're so close to being done, you just don't even know it. Not once do I go past that, that line. I make sure I stop right at it because there's a seam right there. So I literally just stop right there. That's it. So what you would do now is you would take the time and trim away all of this excess um, foam all, on, all, all the way around on all the curves. So I'll do a couple and then we'll flip it out. And then the last step is top stitching. So it's you're literally uh, done after you top stitch until unless you want to fold down your petals and add um, you know, add a strap. And the strap is, I didn't put anything in the directions about a strap because it's, it could be whatever you, whatever length that you want it to be. Just kind of measure it out and just make a basic um, strap where I just put like a, you know, cut the fabric about a, like if I wanted a one inch strap, I'm cutting a four inch strip of fabric and I'm adding um, maybe like a three quarters inch of a piece of a batting or foam in it to give it a little bit durability. With the, the larger handles, I would probably use foam. Particularly if you're going to be making it for like an Easter basket. It's all about the strength for those because they fill them up with eggs. And they, baskets can get a little heavy. Have you seen kids using like aprons as pockets, like large pockets at Easter bags? No, I have not. I used to have an apron that had pockets for my gathering the eggs for my chickens. 
I don't have the chickens no more. I thought about making one, a pattern for that. I'm just carefully trimming away because this is the last bit of the trimming. And now the purpose of this bit of trimming is so that you don't have so much bulk when you are top stitching. You're not having to fight it. If you have a machine that handles it well, then just you don't have to worry about it so much. And this machine will handle it well, but I think about a lot of people don't have an M7 or a 15,000, so you might have something that might not handle this. So trim it away. That's why the little trick of not pressing it all the way to the edges, so it makes it easier for you to just uh, trim, it, trim it back. And then I do like to, uh, since this is a curve, I do take my time and uh, grab my pinking shears and, yeah, see I didn't separate it very well right there. Grab my pinking shears and um, clip these curves or you could just go ahead and clip them with regular scissors, your little snips or something. One more, one more curve to go. Now I make sure I get as much away from the juncture where it, everything you wrote pivoted at so you don't have any excess there for top stitching. Renee McLaughlin says she just ordered her large stuff. Oh, there you go. You're going to love it. This is one of the largest one right here. I think this is the smallest of the larger set. Again, this is so many things you could make with these besides, you know, Easter's around the corner. But when I used to have puppies, I always had tons of puppy toys. It was just a nice little foam basket to throw all their toys in. All right, so this is already uh, done all the way around. I've got all of the excess off. Now I'm going to take the time and I'm going to do a little clipping of this curve. I don't know if it's necessary, but I, it's what I did because it is a curve. So I just trim away. With not, get, not getting too close, but just clipping some of these curves so it'll be easier for um, not puckering for when you go to flip it out. These new scissors are sweet. Easy to use. They're not hard at all. I think we ordered these back in goodness sakes, December, just using some pinking shears. And two more to go. One more. Okay, so now we're just going to find our little opening. And this is fun because it's, it's a lot that's going through here. So here's my opening that was inside my lining. So I'm just going to reach in here and we're going to just start pulling this out. It's, it's, it's kind of a tight, but once I get started, I start pushing it in through from the back side. It's these pedals, I think, that makes it a little bit more difficult to push it through. But once I get started, I start pushing from the back and pushing it in, pushing it through this way, pushing it through and it starts working its way through. Takes a second. 
Yeah, petal projects get ready to bloom. Almost there. So now I'm just still pushing it through from the back. Not doing so much pulling. I think it's because of all of those uh, scallops that you're dealing with. All right, so then I go in with my hand. I wanted it big enough for my hand to flip through. Now I'm going to push out all the edges of my basket first. Push out all those points, all those corners. Then I'm going to reach in and now I'm going to start working through the petals. Pushing through each petal. You might want to use a turning tool to kind of press out those seams. You. Oh my goodness, we're so much done. The only thing left is to sew the opening clothes and top stitch. And I don't think I'm going to go through all that. Y'all know how to do that, but let me push that down in here. I wanted you to see how nice. A lot of times you have such a juncture of fabric going on here at these points. But it's so much smoother. Once I roll this all back, it's so much smoother because I had an actual starting and stopping. See that, how much nicer that is right there? Because you have an actual starting and stopping. It doesn't get all bunched up too much. Not to say that it won't, but it just seemed like it was a lot smoother. So I just push all this down, grab my um, opening right here, kind of give it a tug. You can hand stitch it close, or you can give it a tug and you can sew this on your sewing machine just to close that up. Just close that up. Ms. Now, uh, Rika Henderson was asking, did you leave turning holes? Um, the turning? The front end lining or lining? I only left the turning in the lining. It was when we were sewing up the sides, when we were sewing these sides up right here for the lining one of these sides I left an opening and that's that's this rate where is my opening oh my goodness there it's right here there's my opening right here so it's one of these sides right here not here on the bottom but here on the side of the lining I suppose you could do it on the bottom I just did I want it I don't do it on the bottom because we are pressing all of our seams to the edge and we are um, making that pretty flower that you end up sewing over and that went top stitching. So that's why we don't have that opening on the bottom. We have it on one of the sides. So the last step would be after you sewed your opening closed is I just kind of roll this back as much as I can. Um, even might even grab some clips to kind of hold it in place to, you know, create some sort of a memory, maybe press that. And then I put my G foot on and I just top stitch it about an eighth of an inch or so maybe even more I could, could go not quite a quarter but just shy of a quarter scant quarter you know just make yourself a pretty little top stitch and I'll show you on the one that I have over there but I I like rolling this under and grabbing my clips and it kind of holds it in place and I'll take it and press it so this is the one that I did that's closest to it and that's this one right here so I just I rolled it back. I gave it a good press. Now that's when I did that final, a big pressing. So I actually flipped it inside out so I could have my, um, the, the lining, so I could have this on the inside and I took it to my ironing station and I ironed it. So that's where it fully adhered all of this to it. And I'll just show you, I'm going to take these clips off and I'll show you what I did. I took it out, lined it, because you know how some of it wasn't adhering very well because I don't press it all the way through. I don't want to press those edges. So by doing that, turning it right, right side in, inside out. So you got this. So then I, I lay this on my machine, on my table, and I'm now pressing all of those petals, and I'm pressing that seam too, 
and now I'm getting all that heat. So now whatever it wasn't attached to the petals, particularly towards the top, if you saw it was kind of not attached at all at the top of the petals. Now I'm pressing out that seam, but I'm also now adhering the last of the, um, the foam to attach to the petals. So I do that on this side. I don't think it's going to work because this is based off of a hexagon. So like here's your, it's like taking the hexagon, I'm going to pull one out. This one is the four and a half. So it's like taking the hexagon, there's your points, points. You see the, the six triangles that's in here. So like the bottom part is your triangle. So I don't think you can add more petals to make it bigger, but you can make it taller. So if you wanted, um, this look of this one right here, but you wanted it to be a taller basket. So say like this one, you wanted it to be a taller basket. So when you do your cutting, you're just gonna cut here, here, slide, slide this down. So imagine now it could be taller. Could you imagine it taller? So you have the same, the same thing. You just made it a taller basket, but it would still be the same diameter on the bottom. So that would be something that you could do. You could make it a deeper, deeper basket. Did that, did that answer? I don't think you could add more petals. I mean, I've seen petal baskets that are based out of a square. So like if you took a, like a 10 inch square, like if you were doing a square, so it's only four pieces. So imagine this would be, the square. You could probably do it with a, if I based it all of a pentagon, but I did this one based like, like a hexagon. So yeah, so that's this finished is just sewed up my lining, pressed it, and then just top stitched it all the way around. Now, if you wanted to add buttons to it, like we did here, I just folded over the butt, folded over my petals. And I actually sewed it with my sewing machine. I just laid this underneath the sewing machine with my button attachment foot and just had it stitch on. If I did my strap, I just had my strap. I actually sewed my strap on and then I did the button on top of it. So that's a lot of layers that's going on there, but that's by just attaching a strap to it. If I wanted this basket to be taller, I would do that. I could make this taller and still have the same size. It'd just be taller. So you could fold over your petals to have the look where it's all of them folded over or just fold over a couple and have a look like this one. Like this one is the, um, if this is a five and a half, this is the six and a half, so it's a little bit bigger with a strap on here. And I just put the same foam that's on the inside, just did a couple little decorative stitches, just gave it a nice strength. And then I just added a cute little button on each side of this little bunny basket. This big one here, I didn't put any straps on at all. I thought it'd be just a good little catch-all that you could put kids' toys in, pet, pet toys in it, whatever you'd want, just big catch-all. All right, any more questions? Uh, Here's the smaller set. What's like hanging on it too? <laughs> smaller set. So this is the two and a half based on a two and a half inch square. This is the three and a half size, just a sweet little basket. Here's the larger size. These would be great for, you could um, use that indoor-outdoor fabric, that one that holds up to weather a little bit more. Use it, you know, make a pretty decorative uh, thing to place your pots in, your flower, flower outdoor flower pots. Um, you could just do all kinds of, kinds of things with it. It's just sort of like how we were thinking with the curvy bag, just one of those fun uh, projects that you could just use for a multiple, and I've multiple different ways, and I can't wait to see some of the ones that you all make. Any more questions? Yes. Do the instructions include how much fabric you need for each size? No, I don't think I went down that far. I um, it's not. It's literally not much. So I think maybe a half a yard total for the large one. I mean, you're, you're cutting out six, and then you're cutting out six of the lines. So it might need a half a yard all the way down to 
hardly anything for, for this one. You just got to cut out six of one and six of the other. So it, it does it maybe a half yard total for the largest and work your way down from there. It doesn't take much fabric at all. Any, any other questions? Everybody got that? Yeah, Full written instructions. Now you got a video. And I, my goodness, we got this done before four o'clock. <laughs> of course, I didn't sew it, but I did have this one done. So this is pretty much the exact same thing, except I added, I just had one of the linings, at, you know, I just brought the lining on the outside. So same basket, just needs to finish it up and then just do whatever you want with them. I can't wait for you guys to get the templates.